the day, we are all just our mother's daughters. Are girls not reading in the 2000s? Logan's not afraid of that because he has money. <laughs> Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel and it's by Mandy. My name is Amanda and today I'm talking about all the sweaters I would knit for the cast of Gilmore Girls. I made a video last month talking about different Real Housewives franchises and the sweaters that I knit for them and I'd really like to do a deep dive on one of my favorite comfort shows of all time which is Gilmore Girls. These videos do take a little more effort than my normal knitting videos so if you do like them please let me know in the comments. I would love to know who your favorite Gilmore characters are, what would you knit for them, what are your favorite episodes. Let's just talk all things Go More Girls and all things knitting. I want to talk with you in the comments like let's get into it. If you're unaware, Gilmore Girls is a drama slash comedy show that ran for seven years in the early 2000s on a network called the WB and then later on the CW. This show is about a mother-daughter pair, Lorelai and Rory Gilmore, who live in Stars Hollow, Connecticut. The show is really known for a few things. One being their incredibly quick, witty dialogue. I think the other for the small town charm and feel of the show. Although the show was filmed just on like a regular WB lot, it still feels very cozy and charming, which I think is one of the factors that keeps people coming back to rewatching the show year after year. And another thing that stands out to me is the fashion. This was a show that was made from 2000 to 2007 and it serves as this like great time capsule for early 2000s fashion. It's very, I think, nostalgic and reminiscent to see what the women are wearing in these shows. The show follows Lorelai and Rory Gilmore through, I guess, seven years of their life and follows their different relationships that they form, follows Rory through high school and through college, and it also explores the relationship that both Lorelai and Rory have with Lorelai's parents, Emily and Richard. Emily being, you know, the third Gilmore girl. Emily and Richard come from old money, although it's never really determined exactly where their money came from. They lived a very comfortable, luxurious lifestyle that Lorelai always rejected when she was younger. She ended up getting pregnant when she was 16 and since really had a strenuous relationship with her parents while having this very extremely close, fun, non-traditional relationship with her daughter. All of this is important because all of this plays into the style and what the showrunners were trying to tell us through these characters' style. I'm going to go through the first three Gilmore women, Lorelai, Rory, and Emily. They get three sweaters that I picked out for them and then everybody else on the cows cast just gets one uh, because I think, you know, they're just not as important. So let's start with Lorelai. Everything about Lorelai is a rejection of her childhood. Everything from how she lives her life, the food that she eats, how she styles her home, and the clothes that she wears. She has a very youthful, casual style that's hallmarked by graphic tees and cozy sweaters and lots of like fun color and texture. She wears a lot of tie-dye in early seasons with like boot-cut jeans. Iconic moment in season one where she forgets all of her dry cleaning for Rory's first day at Chilton, which is a private school that Rory goes to. And she ends up having to wear cowgirl boots, cut-off shorts, and a pink tie-dye shirt. Not something I don't think I could ever imagine my own mother wearing when I was in high school. Same time, she runs an inn and she has an incredible business wardrobe as well. In early seasons, she wears a lot of like pencil skirts and just like fun blouses, which are always just like a little sexy, like a little fun, with like boots. And she always looks very like well put together, I think, when she's at work. Later seasons, she wears a lot of Diane von Furstenberg wrap dresses. Those are, I think, become a hallmark of her style when she's at the Dragonfly Inn. She can like dress up and be polished and put together, but she often chooses when she's not at work to kind of dress like a teenager and maybe dress with a bit like of a more whimsical flair. The first sweater that really stuck out to me for her is the Helix Halter by Parking Knit. So this really falls into her more casual wear, her more fun wear. This is a see-through lace pattern that can be worn either as a tank top or with sleeves with a cold shoulder opening. I could see her layering fun patterns underneath it or like a fun colored tank top underneath it and maybe wearing it like 
transitioning into fall or into summer, something about this pattern just felt very like of that time to me, even though it was only released this year. I could also maybe see her wearing it in a little bit of a looser gauge. So I think this top is intended to be worn with little ease or negative ease. But I could also see her wearing this as like a full sweater with, with full sleeves and not like the, the peep. When I think of Lorelai, I often go back and watch seasons like four and five. Those are my favorite. And she's often wearing the DVF wrap dresses in those seasons. So I really associate those with her. And I think, you know, in honor of that, knitting a wrap top or sweater for her would be more than appropriate. Uh, knitting for Olive has a pattern called the Darling Wrap. It kind of has this like, what maybe we would call today like ballerina core feel to it, but it, a wrap is a pretty classic and timeless style like someone was wearing it 20 years ago on a tv show and it felt fresh and i still feel like it can feel fresh now we're seeing it being woven into like this ballet aesthetic now that's popular in fast fashion it's tight fitting which kind of checks with what she would wear to work maybe she likes to show a little cleavage like not in like a weird way but she's not i think a afraid to wear things that are like tight fitting and close to her body and I could just see her wearing this like with a pencil skirt and a high knee boot to work with like a funky scarf and hat. Her fashion was just everything. I just love Lorelai's fashion. It was so good. So good. The last thing that came to mind when I was thinking of Lorelai and her fashion was a book that I actually picked up from like a little free library in my neighborhood, but from what I understand was a very popular book at the time. And that is The Stitch and Bitch Knitter's Handbook by Debbie Stoller. So this was a book that was published in 2003, which is like right smack dab in the middle of when Gilmore Girls was filming. And I have to say, I haven't read really any of it, I just kind of picked it up and looked at the pictures because I thought it was cool and it was free. And almost everything in here, like I think Lorelai Gilmore would wear. It just has a very, I mean, it feels of that time, you know? These are almost sweaters that I might knit for some of the guys, but we'll get to them later. It has a lot of fun colors and kind of these like really textile aesthetics. I thought this top is very Lorelai and like this high empire waist I think was really popular during the time. Um, I could see her wearing that in like a more casual setting. I mean, I could see her wearing this hoodie, um, going to a movie night or something like that. Be wearing this kind of high necked belted tank top to the end to go to work. Really like a lot of patterns in here I could see her making. Even the accessories, I think we kind of laugh at maybe novelty items like eyelash yarn um, and things like that, or like novelty yarn. But back then, I feel like Lorelai would rock a lot of that. Like, I'll pull this back up again, and I have another book that I also pulled inspiration from. So I feel like this is a little serendipitous that I have a bit of a bit of a time capsule from when this show was running. It's very Lorelai Gilmore if she ever decided to knit. Next Gilmore girl that we have is Rory, of course, Lorelai's daughter. When we meet Rory, she is just about to turn 16 and she's just like young and fresh faced and innocent. I was really inspired to actually just sit down and make this video because I was watching another YouTuber make video essays. Uh, her name's Kendra Gaylord and she's made a series of videos on Rory, Lorelai, and Emily and they're fantastic. So I would really recommend checking those out. But one thing that she notes in those videos is that and often in rewatching these shows, it's a bit drastic. The character arc that Rory has. She's really sweet and like innocent in the first seasons and then she ends up like not being maybe the perfect image that people had of her which I think is totally fine. I think that's good writing. She points out that one of the reasons is that a lot of the people that we meet in Stars Hollow are static and they don't have a lot of character development. Like Lorelai is who she is. She is a fully formed adult and Rory is one of the only people that we really see truly like grow and change and come into her own on the show. So I think that's an interesting note and when keeping that in mind I am now rewatching season one and her style in the beginning I think echoes of course 
a lot of the casualness of Lorelai's style, but it's not exactly as spunky or as loud. It's a bit more understated. It's very comfortable. She is often almost having like a boyish feel to her style. In the first episode, a huge chunky Erin sweater that's like really oversized. And later she does wear more feminine pieces as well. That boyish style to me is almost a nod to her not being like fully formed as like a, a girl teenager yet. I also see her a lot in her school uniform. And I kind of interpreted this as Fashion is not, you know, necessarily the most important thing to Rory. I don't think it is her first form of self-expression. Even when she goes to college, I find her style to be honestly quite boring. And I think that is intentional. Rory cares more about her academics than what necessarily she's putting on her body, but it's not like she doesn't care at all. Like she's still cute. Good example is in season four when they go to spring break, like all the girls are wearing bikinis and like skimpy bathing suits and Rory's like wearing a one piece. You know, I think it's intentional. They put Rory in a one piece to be like, yeah, Rory's like not cool, but she'll like go to spring break, but she's not cool you know she's not cool like her friends madeline and louise and i think that comes through in her style although we're like constantly told how much everyone's in love with rory and that's very apparent even from the first season like people are just like obsessed with this girl and a lot of it is like you have to take because you're meeting this character for the first time you take like everyone's word for it like how much they love her and how amazing she is and then you kind of realize later on you're like hmm is she? Back to her style in sweaters that I would knit for her. The first thing is a recreation of the Chris Evans Knives Out sweater. It matches like almost perfectly the sweater that she wore in season one. And I always think about this sweater when I think of Rory. I, uh, two years ago, made a Gilmore Girls inspired sweater and it was big and white and textured. It wasn't cabled, so like, I'm not going to list it. This one is just season one Rory. And to me, this is like quintessential Rory. This is the image of her maybe when you think of her when she's young, like back at Stars Hollow High. Her style is very discreet, it's very casual, and the knits that I picked out for her kind of reflect that. I think they have less of a trendy feel of Lorelai's knits at the time, although we probably look at Rory's outfits and be like, that's of her time, it wasn't as like hyper trendy or as loud as Lorelai's outfits. So something else that I picked out for her is the Darling Cardigan by Veronica Lindbergh. And this is just like a v-neck cardigan that has some nice shoulder shaping and about like three little buttons going down. And the thing that feels a little more 2000s about this is that it's made in an alpaca. Just think of like fuzzy sweaters during the early 2000s and you see I think Lorelai wearing things like that and I think that's something maybe Rory would have worn um maybe on a date night with Dean, maybe um, making out with Jess. She also wears like a Chilton cardigan sometimes. I think usually you see her in a blue Chilton blazer but you also sometimes see her in a gray Chilton cardigan. Can you tell I've watched this show so many times? Last one is something that I actually talked about in my Real Housewives video and that's also a knitting for olive pattern and that's called the classic rib. Um, this is also pulled really right from promotional materials where Rory's wearing a two by two rib orange v-neck over or under a jean jacket with Lorelai. This is basically a recreation of that and I think it goes to show like this pattern was published in, I don't know if it has a date on it. But this knitting for olive pattern doesn't have a date on it that I can tell, but this is something I think you could have worn 20 years ago. You could, you could wear today and it wouldn't necessarily scream, you know, this is a really trendy item. Rory would wear almost even in like a day in the life. I'm not going there. Like I'm not touching that stylistically because I don't necessarily consider the spinoff as canon. I enjoy it for what it is, but we're not we're not fully going there in this video. <laughs> I think it's something that, that she would wear and I think it holds true to to today.
Rory is able to navigate both in the old money world of Emily and Richard Gilmore, but also in the maybe more modern and casual working class world of Lorelai Gilmore as well. Not to say that they're like working class because they still have generational wealth, but like Lorelai kind of, it was working class for a little, and then Rory gets to benefit from the generational wealth of her grandparents. It's all kind of muddled, but my point is to say that she can navigate both worlds of two women who are very different but also very similar because in the end of the day we are all just our mother's daughters. Emily, as opposed to Lorelai, is a very buttoned up, old money, traditional Connecticut woman, and that is reflected like dead on in her style. You see little variants in her style I think throughout the seasons. In early seasons you see her wearing a lot of slacks and button downs and cardigans. Like that's her uniform for Friday night dinners. You often see Emily in the home and like that's what she's wearing. And then for more formal affairs you see her usually in like a suit set. So wearing like a skirt, with a matching blazer even when she's getting her vowed renews in season five like she's wearing a suit and that's so Emily Gilmore of her. It's a very formal style but it's also very luxurious but of course not in a flashy way. Also kind of interesting now that one of like the styles that people talk about is like quiet, is it quiet well? Is it quiet luxury or quiet wealth? Recently on TikTok and within the fashion space, it seems like more and more kind of aesthetics are being branded, right? And one of these aesthetics that has come to the zeitgeist is quiet luxury. This idea that, you know, really actually old money wealthy people, they aren't ostentatious in like their displays of fashion and wealth. I'm not gonna dissect that phrase, let's just take it at face value. That could probably be its own video and I'm sure there's already uh, YouTube essays on that. I will just brush over that, but not to say that there's not a lot to be discussed there. Like I said, a lot of cardigans. I think almost everything I picked out for her is a cardigan. I can't really remember her like vividly wearing a pullover sweater. I know in when they go to the Yale game in season four, she wears a sweatshirt, which is like, it's like seeing a dog walk on its hind legs, but of course she still slays in her sweatshirt and button down shirt underneath that, of course. All to say, she's a very formal woman. She deserves a formal look. And one of those items that stuck out to me is the Jenny jacket by Petite Knit. So this is knit in an all over smock pattern, I believe it's called. It has this like beautiful squishy texture. And for Emily Gilmore, if I'm picking a design that's like hold three strands of mohair together, like you best believe I'm doing that. She's getting the most expensive yarn. She's even buying like a more quality yarn than the pattern calls for, right? Like that's Emily. She wants the finest. And you know what? That's what she'll get. She in a way is mother. The Jenny jacket I think would fit perfectly. I like that it has this luxurious texture, but that's not necessarily as maybe like pedestrian as a texture like I'm wearing or like an Erin knit sweater. It just feels a little bit more polished, which is really Emily. Next is a sweater I found on Ravelry called the Serena Cardigan by Blue Squirrel Yoon. This is a kind of like sailor-esque cardigan. I could see really like a casual Emily wearing this maybe in the garden, not necessarily to a DAR meeting, but maybe like around the house if we see her on an afternoon, she would wear a sweater like this. So it's a normal kind of, I think, cabled sweater. It's not dip stitch, but I think it's um the cables that do this. I, the name of them is escaping me. And it also has this sailor-esque collar that feels old to me. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It just feels like something someone older would wear. It feels very anything goes. It feels very 1940s, that kind of feeling. And I think Emily would totally do that. And fun fact, Carol Bishop was on Broadway. So I just made that connection. <laughs> very, very far connection. Um, she was on Broadway and like anything goes, it was a show on Broadway. Good job, Amanda. If you have time, please look up 
when she's in a chorus line. She's fantastic. Last thing is something that I've knit myself and I'm like, yeah, she would wear this. Let me just grab it for you. And this is the Whitmore Cardigan by Taylor S Studios. This is a beautiful laced circular yoke cardigan. It's knit with, again, a wool and a mohair held together, which something like cashmere or mohair feels oh so Emily, but of course only the finest for her. And something about this sweater felt very like feminine, but also like traditional to me. And I feel like that describes Emily well. Although I wouldn't call her like the most feminine, right? Like she's not wearing like gowns and things that are frilly. I definitely wouldn't knit her in something like this shade of pink. She's usually like wearing more muted colors. So I wouldn't do hot pink, but maybe like a mauve. Maybe. I feel like you mo mostly see her in like blues and neutrals and creams and that's it. Those are the fashion for the girls. I feel like with the three eponymous Gilmore girls, it was very easy to pick out sweaters for them. And I noticed a lot of the supporting characters have almost like a cartoonish type of wardrobe where you don't see them in a lot of different outfits. And a lot of those are men. So when I say a lot of the other characters, it's the men that are on this show. And I think that's interesting. So let's start with Emily's husband, Richard Gilmore. He is an insurance man. He provides for her so she can care for all of the, so she can take care of their social calendar. She can throw galas. She can be in the Daughters of the American Revolution, DAR, and like throw parties while he makes bank as an insurance guy. Although he's a very like imposing and like stubborn man, he has a very sweet relationship with Rory and Edward Herman is also just a fantastic asker, actor, which really endears you to his character. Anne is always almost wearing a suit. Like, <laughs> I was thinking and I'm like, you almost never see him in either not a button down or not a suit with like a bow tie or just a regular tie. Except for when, I think one, when he gets sick and he has a heart attack in season, or he's like a mini, he's angina. It's like a mini stroke in season one. And then when also when he's mourning his mom in season four, can you tell that season four is my favorite? He wears like a robe and you usually don't see him dressed down like that. So only when he's like very vulnerable, do you see his character not wearing, you know, his normal outfit. However, in season one, there is an episode where Emily strong arms both Rory and Richard into golfing together and he is wearing a argyle sweater vest and for that reason I would knit Richard an argyle sweater vest down a few that I saw on Ravelry. A very kind of classic look and I'll show you one more pattern from another knitting book that I have. So this is a knitting book that I got from my boyfriend's sister this Christmas. They do like a used book exchange every year. It's another used bookstore. It's called The Family Knitting Book by James Nurbury. And this was published in I think 1967. I didn't do the full math, but that was probably Richard and Emily's like heyday was the 60s. Either this like book would have really dated patterns or like very classic Emily and Richard patterns. Like this, for example, we're going a bit of a side. Like this is an Emily sweater almost, don't you think? Um, in maybe with a more like modern silhouette. And some of the men's wear is just really fun. This isn't necessarily what I would knit for Richard, but they have a whole section that's like sport wear, which is wild to me. I don't know what this one is called. It's a V-neck cable knit sweater, which feels like something men used to wear on the golf course. I'm not a golf fashion expert. However, I do have a dad in a brother that golf. And these days you wear like dry fit, golf shirts and like dry fit athletic slacks and shorts, you know, golf courses usually still have a dress code. You have to wear like a collar if it's like a club or something like that. But you know, everything's in like athletic material now to wick sweat. I know that back in the day, you literally like wore dress codes on the golf course. And I'm not exactly sure like when in the 2000s, there was a huge development in like athletic leisure wear. However, I think it does kind of show Richard's age that he's and his his values and his like tradition that he's wearing this kind of old fashioned styled sweater on the golf course. I would knit him something golf related for that reason. And I literally the other reason is I don't think you ever see this man in a sweater otherwise. 
like ever. Moving on to some of the men back in Stars Hollow, let's talk about Luke. Luke, 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 love him. Even in the first season, he's just so endearing and I love him. I love Luke so much. He's the blueprint. He almost the same as Richard is always wearing the same outfit. So kind of juxtapose, 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 my dumb. Juxtapose. So juxtapose to Richard, Luke is wearing the same outfit, but it's very casual. It's working class. In one episode where Lorelai brings Luke over to Emily's for dinner, she is, you know, insulting him, but in a way that you don't know you're being insulted. So she's saying, you know, they don't make jackets in like plain cloth anymore. And that's what Luke's wardrobe is. He is wearing flannels and he's wearing a green army jacket over those flannels when it's cold. And he's wearing the blue baseball cap that Lorelai buys him in season one. It left kind of little room for me to pick out something for Luke. You do see him get dressed up when later on he and Lorelai start dating and also when he goes to weddings and stuff like that. But you can tell like he feels uncomfortable in those formal clothes and like I can't really remember seeing Luke in a sweater. It's possible that he's worn one, but they're not like a hallmark of his style. This is a little unorthodox. There are a few shacket patterns, so a shirt jacket that you can knit. This is, I think, technically for women. I don't know if it's technically unisex or what, but this is by Tiff Knit. It's called the Dawn to Dust Shacket. And it's literally like the closest thing that I could find for Luke. I would just like knit him an army green shacket. He would look fine in it because he's so good looking. I'm assuming if you just watched this far, you know who all these characters are, but if you don't, Laurel or Rory has three main love interests. So like two high school boyfriends and one college boyfriend. The first one being Dean. Now Dean is actually quite cute in early episodes, but he's a little like stage five clinger. He's like obsessed with Rory. He like watches her read and like loves that she can concentrate on reading, which like low bar, I guess. Were girls not reading in the 2000s? I need to know because the way that they talk about Rory is like no one's ever read before. She also says that she's gonna get Dean like a Kafka book for Christmas, which I think in like season two and three, they paint Dean to be out like a little more like anti-intellectual as opposed to Jess. Anyway, to all to say Dean, is really like style wise a simple working class American boy. He's usually wearing nude colors and kind of the larger like I think more loose filling silhouettes that were popular for men at the time. I think now you see a lot more like streamlined style on men wearing maybe more like not form fitting but like close to body pants and shirts. In the early 2000s, like that wasn't a thing. Like guys were wearing baggy shorts and like big pants. Often see Dean in like kind of these like big long sleeve shirts. And so one pattern that I have picked out for Dean is called the Puntal by Belen Fernandez. And I picked this one out solely because of the chest stripe. And I remember my brother having shirts like this in, during this time. And I think Dean wears a few like this too, but like it was very 90s, early 2000s to have just like a stripe across your chest. And like that was the shirt. And so I think Dean would wear a sweater that you made him. Wouldn't it be funny if instead of Dean making an entire car for Rory unprompted, she knitted a sweater for him and then held it over his head when she he didn't say I love you back? That would have been really funny. I don't think Rory would ever do that for a boyfriend anyway. Yeah, that's Dean. He later becomes, I think, my least favorite boyfriend for a lot of reasons. He's like so possessive and then he cheats on his wife and then is like mean to his wife who really only wanted to just like dote on him and love him and she didn't really deserve that even though she was kind of a bitch. Anyway, moving on to my second favorite boyfriend which is Jess and Jess is head and shoulders above Dean to me although he's not necessarily like the best to Rory. I think later on they might have been the best fit for each other. And much like his uncle Luke, he has a cartoonish like wardrobe. And when I'm saying that, I mean like in cartoons, like cartoon characters like always wear the same outfit. Like that's what I mean when I say cartoonish. That it's 
very similar and it's like a uniform almost. Jess and Dean are often compared because they're vying for Rory's attention at the same time and Jess is more of the bad boy but he's more of a bad boy and like not like a does crime way but in like a I'm a hermit and like I'm emotionally damaged kind of way. That comes through in his style by wearing mostly a leather jacket with like a hoodie underneath it. That's a very popular style for Jess. When he's working at the diner with Luke, he's often wearing like a thermal or like the waffle material shirts under a short sleeve button down or like, like button up. You see him wearing like kind of like a work coat, which is almost like a little cropped. Again, like plain cloth as Emily Gilmore would call it. So Jess was also kind of a hard one because I don't also think I've seen him in knitwear but I have seen him in a hoodie and so for him I would knit the Hot Toddy hoodie by Knititude. I actually knit this sweater for my boyfriend last Christmas. I would definitely give him like a little bit of ease and like knit it in like a gray or a black like a very like muted boring color because that's kind of Jess's vibe. You don't really see him break out of his style until we see him again like in season six when Rory visits his publishing house in Philadelphia. He is again like very rote in his style um, and I would just make him a hoodie that he can slap under a leather jacket and break my heart in. Last and my favorite boyfriend is Logan. Again, he's not perfect. None of these men are, but neither is Rory. And Logan, as opposed to Jess and Dean, he's more aligned with the world that Emily and Richard come from. He is the heir of a very wealthy journalism like magnate. Like I is he like a Rupert Murdoch's son? Like, is that who they're making him out to be? Like, kind of? Oh no. Anyway, he, like, his dad owns a bunch of newspapers is what I'm saying. And he's very, like, extremely wealthy. Logan's wealth and access to wealth shows in his style. Unlike Jess and Dean, Logan's, I think, comfortable wearing a lot more different types of clothes. And he's also more like very comfortable, like throwing on a suit to go to Honor's wedding or going to dinner with the Hunt, the Hunt, the Huntsburger, the Hunchburgers, dinner with the Huntsburgers. Like he just like fits into that world, obviously more easily because that's where he came from. A world that Rory kind of has experienced dipping in and out of kind of however she wants to. With Logan, uh, he wears like a lot of tight clothes. He wears like a lot of tight sweaters. I'm a little short king wearing tight stuff. And like he's wearing like zip up sweaters and like they all have like long sleeves. He's still wearing like huge pants like comparatively for the time. And so I actually have two sweaters for Logan because he was actually he like gives us something fashion wise, right? It's not like a lot, but like he gives us something. So the first sweater is called The Zipper Just Do It by Thurston, Thurst, Thurston Do It? Doot? This feels like so Logan to be wearing like a ribbed sweater that has like, you know, a collar up here. I could swear he wears something just like that. It's very Logan, it's very like comfy, rich boy, New Haven Fall vibes, right? Like I could see a wealthy kid in my lecture wearing that. The next sweater that I have is an Andrea Maori pattern and it's called the Gib 2. And this is a sweater that has a little bit of texture. And Logan, I think would it be a man not afraid of texture. Would Jess or Dean like wear a cabled sweater? No, but like Logan's not afraid of that because he has money. <laughs> is that necessarily the connection? No, but like that's the broad one that I'm going to make. He wouldn't be afraid to wear, you know, something maybe just a little more like elevated. I could wear like a lot of tight sweaters. Okay, Logan. He had more of like a sleek style. I think they were trying, you know, to evoke his wealth, but also again, he wasn't flashy. Like he, much like Emily, like he wasn't, flashy in his style. I have two more people to talk about. One is my girl Suki. Melissa McCarthy. I, this is still like my favorite Melissa McCarthy role. I understand like she's gone into comedy but like I would love to see her play a role like this again. I just think she shines. She's so like unique and eccentric and bubbly and funny in this show and I 
breath of fresh air. I just love her. And Suki is Lorelai's friend. She cooks at the inn. You often see her in a chef's jacket, but even when she's wearing like a uniform for work, you can see her personality through like the chef's jackets have different colors. I know when they get their own in, like they're printed and patterned and she works in this like bright, beautiful kitchen that doesn't maybe look like necessarily like what an industrial kitchen you would imagine it to look like, right? And she even wears different colored bandanas. They really kind of emphasize in the early season how clumsy she is. She even has like different colored band-aids on her fingers and they just illustrate her eccentric style. I actually just have a stitch and bitch pattern for her because I saw it and I'm like, that's Suki called Kate Mod, but it is a poncho with pom-poms and furry eyelash yarn. Is that not Suki? That's so her. She would wear that. I know she actually wears a poncho in some episodes. Ponchos were so early 2000s. I know I had one and I think she would also, you know, have something with like a fun fur trim as well. She would wear maybe, I don't know if she would wear this. It doesn't like scream it to me, but I think more so the poncho. She still had like a little bit of whimsy to her, maybe not as much as Lorelai, but it definitely, you know, came through. You know, they are best friends. Editing Amanda here, realizing I made a grave mistake and I forgot Paris. I should just not even post this because that's embarrassing. However, what I would knit for Paris, she also, similar to Worry, has a very, like, discreet style. I feel sometimes she has a more mature style for her age. Like, she's very wise beyond her years. Um, and she's very serious. She's very high-strung, very driven. And she probably is the only person that cares more about academics in this show. Paris, I think, always has more writing on everything because of I feel like she has something to prove, whereas Rory just like wants to go to Harvard. <laughs> like, because that's what she said that she would do. Does that make sense? They also end up having like a really sweet friendship. She's very protective of her. Again, she kind of dresses like she's a grown woman. But one thing that was kind of of the time and that I haven't mentioned yet is just like a no ease or a negative ease turtleneck. And the Koi Turtle by Ginkgo Bee fits this bill perfectly. There's a few examples of Paris wearing these kind of plain turtlenecks under little jackets, blazers, throughout the series. Um, and I think they're perfect for this time period and perfect for Paris. And again, I would only use the finest materials to knit something for my girl Paris. Last person is probably the most disrespected person in this franchise, and that is one Lane Kim. Justice for Lane, she deserved better. Bring back Dave Rogowski. I hate that she ended up with Zach. So Lane is Rory's best friend. So she is in like a very traditional household. Her mother is a Korean immigrant who's also like extremely Christian, very conservative. It's often like a punchline how conservative Lane's mother is. And Lane is always kind of living this double life until she eventually reconciles it when she does get married, which is like a really sweet plot line that she has with her mom. And this is like the only person who I feel like I kind of future casted for her. You know, we see her in A Year in the Life, but I think that something that I could see Lane maybe wearing in later seasons or even in like the rise of the early 2000s hipster movement is like a lot of Andrea Mowry patterns. Andrea, like her patterns, and this is like not derogatory at all. They read very like Brooklyn hipster to me, like circa 2008. One thing that stuck out to me was the tessellated pullover, but I could even see her in like the weekend, the new weekender that she just announced. I could even see Lane wearing like the color shifting shawls that Andrea puts out. Basically like, I know it doesn't necessarily fit maybe everything, 
not everything by Andrea, but like some things like I think really in like dark moody colors like Lane would wear. She just deserves more. I would lend Lane an entire wardrobe if she wanted me to because that's what she deserved. This was a marathon to film, but so, so much fun. I want to talk with you in the comments. Like let's get into it and I will see y'all soon in the next one. Bye.